A remarkable hearing just took place that could determine whether Georgia Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is constitutionally barred from running for re-election as a result of some of her actions in the days leading up to the January 6th insurrection. A group of Georgia voters is pointing to a section in the Constitution that says a lawmaker is disqualified from office if they've been, quote, engaged in insurrection or rebellion. Green has said that she had no knowledge or of any attempt to illegally interfere with the counting of electoral votes on January 6th, but her challengers hauled Green into court on Friday and grilled her on her past comments, falsely stating that Joe Biden had not been legitimately elected president of the United States. Is it fair to say, Representative Green, that from election night of 2020 until January 6, 2021, your personal opinion and your wish was that Congress not certify Joe Biden as the winner of the 2020 election. Uh, no, that's not accurate. But the problem for Green is she has already posted her own video before the insurrection, spreading the big lie that Biden stole the election. Watch. We aren't going to let this election be stolen by Joe Biden and the Democrats. President Trump won by a landslide. No, that's not true. Uh, but Green repeatedly had trouble remembering things during this hearing. In fact, you think that Speaker Pelosi is a traitor to the country, right? Uh, you're, I'm not answering that question. It's speculation. You, it's you've, you've said that, haven't you, Ms. Green, that she's a traitor to the country? No, I haven't said that. Okay. Put up Plaintiff's Exhibit 5, please. Which oh, no, wait. Hold on now. I believe by not upholding the uh, sec securing the border that that violates her oath of office. Fair enough. I'm, I'm not interested in her oath of office. I'm interested in that you said that she's a traitor to our country. Hold on, she said. These aren't exactly good times for Pinocchios. Away from the January 6th investigation, some potential contenders for the 2024 GOP nomination are in search of other sources of outrage. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has gone after Walt Disney's special self-governing and tax status after the company opposed his state's new law that would crack down on teaching about sexuality in school, what critics call the don't say gay law. Never mind that this policy change could result in a big tax increase for some Floridians. Texas Senator Ted Cruz has jumped on the uh, Disney bandwagon like it was a ride on Space Mountain. I think there are people who are misguided trying to drive, you know, Disney stepping in saying, you know, in every episode now they're going to have, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Mickey and Pluto going at it. Like, <laughs> really? It's just like, come on, guys. Like, like these are kids, and, and you know, you can always shift to Cinemax if you want that. Now, if you really believe any of that, we have entered the Magic Kingdom. Uh, absent from all of these attempts to sound the alarm for parents are any actual proposals for things like inflation, high gas prices, and yes, stopping Russian atrocities in Ukraine. And you certainly won't find the same intensity when it comes to getting to the bottom of what happened on January 6th. We are still learning more about what was happening behind the scenes after the insurrection. A brand new court filing uh, from the January 6th committee includes testimony from an aide to then White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. That staffer says Meadows was warned there could be violence on January 6th, and the aide also lays out that several GOP members of Congress were involved in White House meetings aimed at overturning the election results, including incoming Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. As part of their new book, New York Times reporters Jonathan Martin and Alexander Burns obtained audio of House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy slamming former President Trump for his actions on a conference call with fellow Republicans. I've had it with this guy. Uh, what he did is unacceptable. Um, nobody can defend that and nobody should defend it. McCarthy told House GOP members that Trump accepted some responsibility for what happened that day. He bears responsibilities for his words and actions. No ifs, ands, or buts. I asked him personally today, does he hold responsibility for what happened? Does he feel bad about what happened? He told me he does have some responsibility for what happened. Um, and he need to acknowledge that. 
McCarthy also said that it was once his recommendation that Trump resign from office. The only discussion I would have with him is that I think this will pass, and it would be my recommendation we should resign. Um, I mean, that would be my take, but I don't think he would take it, but I don't know. Of course, that audio was released after McCarthy's office denied he ever said that. McCarthy stating privately that Trump should resign from office raises all sorts of questions, like why can't he say that publicly to this day? And why did McCarthy then go to Mar-a-Lago to kiss the ring and welcome Trump back as the GOP standard bearer, less than a month after the insurrection? We still, we still don't have an answer to that one. The only person to really make Trump sweat these days over his coup attempt is British TV host Piers Morgan, at least it looks pretty sweaty when you watch the cinematic trailer for the interview. A former president in denial. No, but it was a free and fair election. You lost. Only a fool would think You think I'm a fool? I do now, yeah. Trump has since said the video released by Morgan doesn't tell the whole story. I guess it's no surprise that Trump's longtime attorney, Rudy Giuliani, who called for, quote, trial by combat at the January 6th, Stop the Steel rally, isn't really quaking in his boots these days. The closest he's been to receiving any kind of judgment was his appearance on The Masked Singer. Oh Former mayor of New York City! Is that what you No, that's not what I think. Rudy Giuliani! No! I met you. And I'm done. I'll break a thousand more babies before I am through. Good for Ken Jeong. But if the events of this week are any indication, maybe there is some hope that the masks are still coming off and the truth will be revealed in this investigation. It's a small world after all.